Hey everyone. All right, so I needed to back up some of my files and I thought, well, let me try uploading those files to AWS. So today I'm gonna to be talking to you about the different ways to upload files to AWS S3. So let's start with small files. Does so anything under five gigabytes? That's right, gigabyte, not gigabyte. That's a different thing. Uh, I recommend you go look it up. But we're gonna start there because it's pretty easy to do. You can use a CLI, just do AWS S3 put, or uh, you can use the UI. The UI is pretty easy. You can just drag and drop and it'll go right up. I'm gonna focus more about how to programmatically upload files in this video rather than just using the UI or even the CLI directly because that's just more useful to me. So hopefully you need something like that as well. So let's start with what the AWS docs call the high level way of uploading those files. I'm gonna use Python and Botto3 as my example. Of course, there's other languages listed there and you can use whichever language you're more comfortable with or whatever the right tool for the job is. Maybe one day I'll go over that, but today is not that day. I skimmed through the docs and the process is pretty much the same across the board. So if I show it to you in Python, it'll be the same when you use .NET or Java. Following the high level route means we're gonna give AWS's libraries a little more control over what's happening. Uh, there's cases where you may just wanna do that, but then there's also cases where you might want a little more control, like if you want to retry things and put pauses in there. So uh, let's first start with the high level because it's just easier to get into first. Okay, let's jump to my code. It's a complete mess, but hopefully it helps get the point across about how this process works. By the way, as usual, all this code is available on my GitHub. Go look up Shones, it's just like the channel name, and you'll find all the code there that you can skim through yourself. The link to that is below in the description. All right, so in the media backup agent file, in the AWS S3 uploader, you'll find a method called upload multi-part simple. This is basically copying the code in the AWS docs called uploading an object using multi-part upload, specifically the upload with chunk size and meta method. To upload the file, we specify where the file is located locally. The key, which is the name we want to call the file in the bucket. This includes any prefixes, which may look like it's in a folder, but remember S3 is object storage, so there's no actual folders in that bucket it's just a prefix to the file. The bucket basically just acts as one giant folder. The config is where we specify how big each chunk we upload is going to be in mebibytes. Remember again, mebibytes, not megabytes. Here I'm using 1024 mebibytes to give me one gibibyte. And last, a callback. The callback I'm using here is directly from the AWS docs I showed earlier. I copied the whole transfer manager class into a new Python file in the project. All the callback function does is give me an update on how many bytes have been uploaded to the S3 bucket over time. So this simple little function lets me upload large files, small files, uh, even ones over five gigabytes. It splits the upload into multiple threads. You can specify the chunk size, or if you don't specify it, it'll just pick one for you, which is pretty nice. But you have to be a little bit careful because if you wanted that as a single upload, which will be important later and I'll explain why, uh, you have to make sure to specify the threshold size and you can do that. So this is shown in the upload with high threshold function in the AWS docs. And like I said, we're gonna go over why that's important. It comes down to how you validate the file. So what if you want more control, more power? More power, baby. Well, that's when we go look at the lower level API. So let's take a look at that now. And before we go straight into the code, let's just talk about the process of how we're going to get a large file up into S3. This is my way of doing it. You could kind of mess with the process a little bit, but generally the AWS docs kind of guide you on how you start, do the work in the middle and end the upload. First, we're going to initiate the multi-part upload by calling create multi-part upload. This is going to give me back an upload ID. Think of the upload ID as an address to refer back to this multi-part upload later. You won't see this file in S3 at all until you complete the upload at the very end of this process. Next, I need to upload a part. So I'll read a specified amount of each file at a time, uh, one gibibyte in my case, and write it into a new file that I refer to as chunks. 
Then I'll upload each chunk specifying which part it is. By specifying the part, this allows us to upload the file in whatever sequence we really want. We can even retry sections if they fail later because when you upload a part over again, it'll just rewrite what was there. My code in its current state isn't great though, maybe later on I'll go and fix it, but it does everything in serial and it also doesn't have retries built in yet, so feel free to add that in if you want. So once you have all the parts uploaded, then you can go ahead and complete the upload and that will make the file show up in S3. If you want to dig deeper into the code, you can go ahead and check out the upload multi-part custom method inside the AWS S3 uploader class. And that's once again in the GitHub repo uh, media backup agent. However, you want to read some docs on this. I totally understand. Sometimes the docs are better. I recommend you check out two pages. So you're going to look at the uploading and copying objects using multi-part upload and uploading an object using multi-part upload. Before moving on, let me give you a tip that's gonna save you a lot of money in the future. So if you start uploading a file using multi-part upload, so you start the multi-part upload, and you may upload some parts, maybe even none, but if you don't call that complete step at the very end, complete multi-part upload, then it'll be lingering forever. And so you'll have to use the AWS CLI to go in there and delete it, because I don't think you can look at it through the UI either. So using the CLI, you want to list the pending uploads and then you'll abort each upload separately. You can also do something like what I did where I wrapped the entire upload sequence except for the complete step and a try catch. And if anything goes wrong, it goes straight to the abort step to get rid of everything. That way you're not incurring costs if anything goes wrong. Okay, so what about validation? We have these large files and they're moving through the internet and you're just not sure if it really got uploaded correctly. Can you imagine if you downloaded it later on, like a year later, cause, and you remembered, oh, there's this, there's this perfect video that I need from this one project. And you go to unzip the file and then it's just jank, it's broken. It's, that, that would just make me wanna throw shit at walls. So how do we validate the file got there correctly? Well, S3 has something called e-tags, and it's really easy if you're uploading a file as a single part file up. The e-tag is just an MD5 checksum of the file. So we're done. Oh, and be careful. Remember, it's not the MD5 of the name. It's the MD5 checksum of the entire file. So you have to read through the entire file to get that checksum. Some people make that mistake. When it comes to multi-part uploads, AWS doesn't have an official way for you to make sure that that multi-part upload got up there correctly. Maybe the libraries are validating the file themselves, but I don't trust anything that I didn't code. And even sometimes the thing I do code, I don't, I don't trust them. They delete things sometimes. However, a determined group of folks on Stack Overflow got together and found out how AWS is calculating those E tags in multi-part uploads. And so let's go back to the animation to talk about the process you would use to figure out the checksum as well. Every time we upload a part or chunk of the file, we receive back an E tag. This E tag is the MD5 hash of the chunk we just uploaded. What we need to do is one, check that e tag against an md5 checksum that we create and make sure they match so that we make sure that the chunks are getting up to s3 correctly this will allow us to also retry any invalid parts that get uploaded which is nice and two we need to make sure to save the byte representation of these hashes for later i was an idiot and got stuck because i kept trying to do this process using the string representation of the bytes use digest not hex digest and you'll see that in there all right so once we finish uploading all the parts and complete the upload we get back a final e tag once again this e tag is not the md5 hash of the entire file so don't even bother just it's not going to match this e tag is actually the md5 hash of all the individual chunk md5 hashes concatenated together and then hashed one more time through the md5 algorithm Remember, it's the byte representation, not the string representation. Then there's a trailing dash and number that tells you how many parts were used to upload this file. So what my code does is take the byte representation of the MD5 hashes of each chunk, puts them all together, 
in part order and then gets an MD5 hash of that string. And that should match the MD5 part of the E tag minus the dash and the part numbers. All right, so I hope that helps you out. I tried to gather all the different information and ways of uploading these files and just try to put it all together in one video. So take the pieces that you need and hopefully use it. Once again, go check out the code. That really helps me out when I'm trying to figure out how something works. It'll be on GitHub description below again, or you could just save this video and just watch it a hundred times. It helps my views out, thanks. Now, long term, I'm probably not going to be backing up all my files to S3 and I'll come out with another video describing to you why I'm not doing that. And it'll become very apparent when I put it all in a spreadsheet. So if you love spreadsheets, make sure to subscribe so that you know when that video comes out. All right. So I got to go start on the next video. I've got too long of a list. I got way too many projects and, and not enough time. Anyway, until next time, see y'all. Called upload multi multi part hopefully you need to not hopefully right like why would i wish hard things upon you programmatically i can't say program programmatically how should i end this should i just end it peace